Yesterday, Lou Elizondo informed us that this year, 2024, will be an interesting year. He also called out former head of Arrow, Dr. Sean Kirkpatrick. There are 299 more days left in 2024, so there's plenty of time for the disclosure process to escalate further, and yes, it's a process. This year is slated to be a challenge for those that assert there's nothing to see here regarding the UFO enigma. Let's just jump right into it. Before I delve into a series of tweets that Lou Elizondo published today, one of which he said, this will be an interesting year and there's no going back. I first want to briefly cover two articles that were written in the publication Scientific American by the former head of Aero, Dr. Sean Kirkpatrick. On January 19th, 2024, he published an article titled, Here's What I Learned as the U.S. Government's UFO Hunter. In this op-ed, he intimated that members of Congress are conspiracy theorists. I find that very strange. It seems to lack decorum and just a sense of proportionality because in my view, instead of focusing on throwing Congress under the bus, he should s instead reflect on why they feel the way they do in regards to how the Department of Defense and the intelligence agencies have handled the UFO issue. And in the, the second article I'm going to cover, and I'm going to do it right now because I'm just going through these briefly, was published yesterday on March 6th, 2024 in the same publication, Scientific American, titled, We Need to Investigate UFOs, but Without the Distraction of Conspiracy Theories. I will share a direct quote from that article, and then I will provide a response to it and i quote arrow's underlying raison d'etre is to investigate evaluate analyze and provide actionable information for use by our national security leadership its purpose is not to prove or disprove the existence of extraterrestrial life but to address the safety and security of our people our operations and our uh, and our nation unfortunately it is also meant to investigate a conspiracy saturated with a distrust between our legislative and executive branches. It is time for the American people to understand that and for the DOD, ODNI, and Congress to step up to the plate and enable Arrow to finish, finish its mission absent this distraction. The first thing I would say is who is responsible for the distrust between the legislative and executive branches when it comes to the topic of UFOs. I would argue that the responsibility lies with the executive branches, namely our military branches, our in intelligence agencies, and the Department of Defense. All of these infrastructures, unfortunately, have behaved extremely shady for multiple decades now. And someone like David Grush and, or, and people like Lou Elizondo and, and Ryan Graves, Commander David Fravor, and former Colonel Carl Nell, and former Rear Admiral Tim Gallaudet, amongst many others that have come out recently, are merely a continuation of people that have come out prior to them articulating that the U.S. government, the executive branch, is lying to the American public about UFOs. So in my view, what Dr. Sean Kirkpatrick is labeling a distraction is in reality a constitutional crisis because members of Congress are being lied to about what deeper pockets of the U.S. government know about UFOs. And th 
the American public are on the other end of disinformation campaigns regarding this topic. Far be it from being a distraction. This is, this culpability lies with the executive branch, not the Congress and not the American people or our overactive imaginations, but instead the executive branch's shady behavior over such a long stretch of time that doesn't ever seem to divert from how shady it is. In the following clip from August 16th, from a something called The Hill Events, titled The Truth is Out There, UFOs and National Security with Michael Schnell, Representative Jared Moskowitz of Florida goes into the shadiness that I'm referring to, the very shadiness that is coming from the executive branch and pouring fuel on the fire of conspiracy theories spreading. First of all, again, if, if what he was saying was just totally untrue, why come out and try to discredit him with this you know, former PTSD thing? Also, whoever did that wanted to have a chilling effect on somebody else who might come out. Again, why? If there's nothing to talk about, if it's all fake, if there's nothing to describe, then you don't need to chill anybody else from coming out. And so again, it just it just shows that there is something here that they're hiding because of the efforts uh, that they're going to. I mean, that hearing almost didn't happen. There were outside forces trying to prevent that hearing from ever happening. And so, you when know, you again, say, when, this, when you say out, when you say outside forces, what exactly do you mean by that? Who exactly are you talking oh, look, there about? Were other, there were other agencies that were invited to attend that refused to participate. You know, there, there were agencies that didn't want that hearing to happen. There was staff that was trying to prevent that hearing. I'm not gonna go into all the details. I'll let Tim and Anna talk about that further. Uh, but, that, but that hearing almost, almost didn't happen. Uh, and, and so, you know, th there is definitely a collective effort to not talk about this stuff more. To further expound on what Representative Motskowitz was conveying, here is a clip from Representative Tim Burchett of Tennessee. Him and his colleagues held a press conference on the upcoming July 26 hearing with David Grush before it happened, and I will play it. We've, we've had witnesses that have, that have backed out on us and have told us that they received inquiries, I guess you could say, from the Pentagon. And so, obviously, we're over the target, and, and they know it, and that's why they're firing at us. And if, if there isn't anything, then why the, why the push to cover it up? Why, do, why don't we know? All we want is transparency. Tell us what it is. So just quickly reviewing what Representative Moskowitz said, other agencies were invited to attend the July 26 hearing. They refused to participate. Agencies didn't, some agencies didn't want that hearing to happen. And as Representative Burchett said, some of these witnesses were told by the Department of Defense, don't attend don't attend the hearing. And as I understand it, there were supposed to be a lot more witnesses or whistleblowers in attendance to the July 26 UFO hearing exceeding David Grush, Ryan Graves, and Commander David Fravor. Now, to add further credibility to this argument, well, why has David Grush been receiving so many reprisals, some of them threats to his life. And why was the intelligence community inspector general, after looking at the evidence for those reprisals, why was his response to that, that, he, that the testimony and claims of Grush were, and I quote, urgent and credible by intelligence community inspector general Thomas Monheim. So I'm sorry, Dr. Sean Kirkpatrick. This isn't uh, a distraction. In some sense, this is the main event because whether or not there are, is non-human intelligence engaging our world, I can't really do anything about it. But 
if my government is lying to me and is lying to Congress and has for a very long time initiated disinformation campaigns, I can do something about that by voicing my opinion that that is utterly unethical, unsustainable, and bad for the republic. Let's progress into tweets that dropped from Lou Elizondo, I guess technically March 6th they dropped, so excuse me on that, yesterday. Let's dive right into his tweets that he published yesterday on March 6th. Friends, it's always most quiet before the storm. There is no going back. Some members of Congress finally know what's going on. Some officials in the executive branch are scrambling. Efforts are underway below the wave tops. The results of which will break the surface and reveal themselves at a time of our choosing. This is going to be an interesting year for those who continue to obfuscate. We are hard at work for you. I mean, that says it all. There's nothing trivial about what Lou Elizondo conveyed and he's putting himself on the spot because if 2024 ends with a, with um, nothing significant emerging progressing this disclosure process, people are going to hold that against him. And he's very careful with what he says about the future. So bear that in mind. I think it's interesting where he said the results of which will break the surface and reveal themselves at a time of our choosing. What does that suggest? It suggests that the ball is in his court and those he's working with to drop whatever they have up their sleeve. He says it's going to be an interesting year for those who obfuscate continue to obfuscate. He's obviously referring to, frankly, people like Dr. Sean Kirkpatrick um, and people behind the scenes that are continuing to persist with the narrative that we don't know what's going on here. Maybe it's just all malfunctions or I don't know, maybe it's drones from China and just trying to persist with the narrative that has been cultivated by the U.S. government for so long, even though, and this is my analysis and I believe it's true, the whole time they knew um, on the basis of, of scientific epistemology that we're not alone and that we're being engaged. And they were, they've been constantly muddying the waters, conf, constantly obfuscating um, and, and trying to prevent us from re realizing the truth. Here's a follow-up tweet from Elizondo from the initial tweet that I just shared with you. So Shane Shifty responds, Lou, you're being called out by Sean Kirkpatrick. He's daring you to provide some evidence. He seems pretty confident that you won't. Why should any of us believe you're hard at work for us? Saying government moves slow isn't going to work anymore. Elizondo responds, we, many of us, already provided classified evidence to Arrow. Lying about it doesn't help his case, but like everything else, the truth is always revealed. Sadly, I really did try and give him a break in the beginning. No matter, his comments won't age well, nor will his narrative. Now, it's true that right from the start, um, publicly, Elizondo was intent on giving Dr. Sean Kirkpatrick a fair shake when he's when he was just about to become or was slated to become the head of Arrow. Here is a clip from May 17th, 2022, right after the very first UFO hearing in 50 years, I believe, in which Elizondo was asked by Ross Colthart about his his impression of Dr. Sean Kirkpatrick. And is, uh, is, is he a good hand? Is he a good hand, Lou? Boy, Ross, you'd have to ask me that, huh? 
<laughs> I, I believe let's give everybody a fair shake. How about that? Right. Let's let's see what they can do. Um, you know, this is part of my frustration. You know, this is why uh, I, I do what I do, because I um, I think the people deserve the truth. I really appreciate the simplicity of what Lou Elizondo just articulated. I find great inspiration in the sheer profound simplicity. He said, I do what I do because I believe people deserve the truth. And that's what it's all coming down to, isn't it? As this saga continues, this process, which entails some people vehemently against transparency about our place in the universe and others with the philosophy that if we know scientifically that we're not alone, that there's another presence, it shouldn't remain within the confines of aerospace companies and small pockets of governments, but should be shared with the world to update their perception of reality. Who in their right mind could come down on the, on the perspective of, well, they don't deserve to know the truth? mind-boggling here's another follow-up from a preceding tweet i shared with you where elizondo called out explicitly dr sean kirkpatrick nick madrid writes with all due respect mr elizondo why not just sit down with ross ross colthart on news nation and explain this in an extended interview i think responses like this need to be heard by everyone loudly and often elizondo responds and that may happen. Here's another exchange. The anonymous librarian writes, any word on when your book drops? Elizondo responds, announcement coming soon. Now here's an interesting response to Lou Elizondo's initial tweet that I shared with you by Matt Ford of the Good Trouble Show. I perceive he's pretty plugged in, has a lot of connections. And here he is backing up what Lou Elizondo stated, and I quote, I can tell you what Lou is stating is not conjecture, not an exaggeration. It is, a, it is absolute fact as to what is going on in Washington. The coordinated efforts by former Aero director Sean Kirkpatrick, paid journalists, the Pentagon, and the professional debunkers to derail the truth will backfire on them in a spectacular way. You can take that to the bank. The last segment of this video we're going to cover a media briefing that very few people were invited to, and many were upset over how the Department of Defense is handling this. Here is a clip from News Nation host Marky Martin interviewing journalist Ross Colthart. And she's referencing him in the following clip. You were not one of them. And your exclusive was the catalyst for everything. Make it make sense. Look, there's a crucially important report coming up before the uh, Congress, Marky, and it's coming from the Pentagon's UFO investigation office. And it's not just us at News Nation; It's a lot of the news media have been excluded from a very select invite-only meeting where certain journalists are being invited to get an embargoed copy of that report so that they can write their stories before the rest of us. And I think this is reprehensible. I think the Pentagon is playing favorites what they're trying to do is control the narrative they're trying to make sure that you the public don't get to hear the full story because i can guarantee to you there are questions that we would be asking at news nation and indeed other news media not invited would be asking that aren't going to be asked because unfortunately the kind of media who are being invited are the fairly tame compliant national security reporters from the major networks who frankly know that if they ask hard questions they don't get invited back now this media event that i that colt hart was just referencing the thing about it is is that it, it's 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 covering basically an upcoming aero historical uap report 
And as I understand it, the journalists that are attending this media briefing are going to be given copies of the Arrow historical UAP report prior to it publishing so that they can prepare to write stories about it. And so when, once the Arrow historical UAP report drops, they'll be able to publish stories immediately. Now, the problem with this is that I've heard from somebody that the, the journalists that are invited to this are not really read up on UFO history, like journalist Ross Colthart is, or journalist Christopher Sharp is. And so the impression that a lot of people have is that the DOD intentionally invited journalists that would not ask questions that they don't want to be asked about UFO history. And this would contribute um, to them writing stories that don't really challenge the DOD on what this historical report is going to reveal. So in other words, once this historical report drops from Arrow and they write a story about it, the first stories that are going to come out, the most initial ones, because they've already prepared, are going to potentially kind of go along with the song and dance, if you will. But we'll see. Maybe, maybe, because I don't have a list of the journalists that are attending this media event, so maybe there are some people who are actually going to ask difficult questions. I will share a few tweets from March 5th from journalists Christopher Sharp and Ross Colt Hart, where they talk about this media event, which I think will, will help solidify the context of what's going on. On March 5th, Christopher Sharp wrote, event confirmed, this is a small in-person session with Arrow's acting director. I am not comfortable with this as someone who wishes to hold the Arrow to account. And then he, quote, tweets his own tweet and writes, Session will happen. DOD gets primary definition. If journalists report repeat talking points without scrutiny or reaction from UAP advocates. Publications with journalists present at session report the story first, allowing DOD to shape narrative to maximum audience. And Ross Colthart quote tweeted uh, one of Christopher Sharp's tweet and wrote, Sadly, it is predictable that Department of Defense PR spin doctor Susan Goff has selectively invited, no doubt, compliantly tame traditional security reporters to a briefing tomorrow with the new DOD Aero director. News Nation was not invited, yet it has given the story preeminent coverage. So much for Department of Defense's pledge for transparency on UAPs. Cue the psychophantic debunking stories courtesy of this briefing. It's a fail. Over to you, Congress. And I'm looking forward to the whistleblowers coming forward eventually and revealing what they know. All the Pentagon is doing is trying to delay the inevitable. So that was another segment from the Marky Martin interview with Ross Colthart that aired today on News Nation. Ross Coldheart said more whistleblowers are coming and that the DOD is just trying to delay the inevitable. And I really assess that that is accurate. Rebuttals to what's going on now have been, there's a cult in the Pentagon. Um, so like a mass social contagion. Another hypothesis has been uh, that it's a PSYOP, and, and some people say it's a combination of those two things. I disagree. Um, I don't think it's a, a social contagion. I don't think it's a PSYOP. I think we are literally not alone. Some UFOs represent NHI, non-human intelligence, and that's coming out, and that's inevitable. And Jeremy Corbell said on the most his most recent podcast ep episode, Weaponized Podcast, that... While we should be aware of David Grush's upcoming op-ed, he said that, as I recall, something else bigger might drop, more impactful. So, hearkening back to what Elizondo said 
where he said, there's a lot happening underneath the surface that is going to emerge. I assess that as correct. Um, every secret has an expiration date, at least every secret that is of this magnitude. And another sentiment that ha happens to have been said by Lou Elizondo is that this secrecy is not like wine. It doesn't get better with age. So I think there's a lot of really patriotic people inside the U.S. government that frankly are just not going to allow this to persist much longer because it's not sustainable and the longer it goes on, the worse the blowback is going to be, the worse it's going to be for the, the, the U.S. government and the country and the world. So because there's a lot of good people who are, who are not going to tolerate this, I think it's safe to assess there's a good probability that 2024 could become really, really interesting. And, and I, I'm going to keep my eyes peeled and report to you what happens. Thank you so much for watching and please do not forget to subscribe. If you'd like to support this channel, you can check out my merch shop where I sell t-shirts. You could become a patron. You could become a YouTube member. You could give me a one-time donation. All those potentialities can be accessed in the description box below or you could just slap a like on this bad boy and I will appreciate it so much. Thank you so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Special thanks to all patrons, YouTube members, those that have bought merch, those that have given me one-time donation. I couldn't do without you. Thank you so much. See you in the next episode.